All right, I want to show you just a quick tip in ZBrush for iPad, uh, how to make these wraps uh, for this little axe I'm working on. So I'm going to go to my subtool palette over on this side. And I'm just going to take this handle that I should rename, but whatever, copy and go to a new subtool, go to a new subtool, sure, whatever, and click on the three dots up here and paste. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this object here click OK and I have my handle that I had for my axe now if I go ahead and look at my wireframe we can see here that I have a bunch of different poly groups and cuts on this and let's say I want to add the loops that I had earlier uh, to do that what I do is I first go into my subtool menu and I go to poly groups and I'm gonna go ahead and make everything a single group so to do that I'm gonna go to auto groups and it will just basically auto group any mesh that is connected so all these points are connected so it's gonna make one giant poly group so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my subtool menu, go to geometry, and I'm going to delete the lower, uh, ver delete lower. So I have the high poly version. It's mainly I'm baking down all that geometry, so then I can keep the um, the shape, the primary form of this uh, thing of this handle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my uh, wireframe, we can see that we still have the shape, so I'll, you know, I'll just turn it back on. Because we're, what we're going to do is go to the little control button, which is going to be the little smiley face over here. And the smooth, if we hold, click and hold on both, it'll select both of our uh, buttons, our modifier keys, and then it'll basically give us the ability to use some of our other brushes down here. Now the one we want is going to be the slice curve, this guy right here. Now the reason why we use the slice curve and we uh, make a slice, if we add a line here the shadow side is basically going to cut a poly group for us now if i don't like where i place that line i can bring my thumb while holding on the button just drag my thumb and now i can reposition over the little uh button the modifier key on the uh, right side of that little menu and then come back and now i can just re-angle it i'm just going to put it right there and then release and oh we we're on delete lower cool all right do that again make that line we don't want to have subdivisions on this and now if we go ahead and get close we can see that we made a poly group so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make a bunch of those cuts just randomly for the sake of this if you wanted to get really technical you could uh make these a little bit more procedural i'm just showing you what i did for the axe over there let's go ahead and cut that cool so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the subtool menu. I'm going to go all the way down to subtool, actually go up to subtool, then split. I'm going to do groups split. Now it's going to be like, do you want to do this? It's not undoable. That's okay. Let's go ahead and undo that. So now we have all these different poly groups for our handle. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go back to my subtool palette and then I'm going to collapse the split and go to merge and I want to make sure I have weld turned off. Now what I'm going to do is merge down all of these. So I, we basically separated everything and then we're going to connect it again. So merge down. I'm going to say always OK. And then when you do this, I recommend restarting ZBrush for iPad so then you don't accidentally merge something you don't want to later. So I'll just do always OK and then just spam the merge down button so everything is connected so now i'm only going to select the wraps that i want so i'll hold control or the little smiley and the smooth and i'll just solo that one and that's going to solo my the thing i tap on but then if i tap it again it's going to hide it so then i'm going to go ahead and select this bottom one as well and that's going to give us all the loops that we had earlier i'm going to go back to my subtool palette go to geometry and uh, modify topology and delete hidden. So now we have all these things and they're doing a funky thing because we have something called dynamic subdivision on. I don't want that. Now we have our basic shape, but they're really dense right now. What I will do is I'll go back to my subtool palette. I'll hit the three dots and we'll go to paste again. So we can make sure we have our handle for reference. So we have our wraps and we have our reference for the overall shape. We're gonna go back to our wraps, which is gonna be that top subtool. 
and then we are going to go to Z remesher. Now, what I do from here is I'll just set it to half and then I will turn on my wireframe, the little LF. So we have our wraps over our, our dude, our handle, and now what we need to do is go to our Z remesher. We're gonna set this to half, and then we also wanna go into our Z remesher options and turn on keep groups. Uh, I can go ahead and turn off adapt. We're gonna turn off smooth groups, uh, adapt to size to zero, just, yeah. just make sure it's on half and keep groups. Z remesh and Z remesh. So now if we go ahead and solo with the little D icon right there, we have all of these cool little uh, cylinders of our object. And then from here, what I can do is I can unsolo that and I'm gonna go into my subtool palette and go to deformation and I'm going to go to inflate and I'm gonna inflate this by one and don't hit things you don't wanna press. Where's the inflate? There we go, just set that to one, one tick up. So it's just outside the edge of our handle and then from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my subtool menu, go to geometry and add a dynamic subdivision. Now, the reason why we use dynamic subdivision is when we turn it on, it's going to subdivide it and basically crunch and, and collapse it. It's basically subdividing our geometry, uh, but it's doing a fake subdivision, but we don't want it to do that completely. Instead, we wanna make sure that we turn on some thickness and we're gonna just make it just a little thick because these wraps would just actually be wrapped around the thing. And we're gonna turn off post subdivision there. And now with the post subdivision, we basically have those wraps kind of hugging each other. And we have this really cool looking effect of like a wrap sort of thing. Now I do see there's a little poking piece of geometry right there. Let me see what that's about. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that just a little bit. We always run into these little issues. Uh, but what I am gonna do is uh, go to my deformation. And before we do the uh, inflate, we're gonna go to this contrast slider and just contrast it just a little bit, just to separate it. So then when we do our Z remesher, just like set that contrast to negative one. So now none of these actual pieces of geometry are touching. Go back to Z remesher and then make sure we have half turned on and keep groups and Z remesh. And then we'll go to Z remesh one more time to make it uh, a nice half. And now if we turn on our dynamic subdivision and then we go on our thickness. Now I do realize I'm using my quick menu, so I will do that again. We'll go back to geometry and go to my dynamic subdivision and make sure that I add some thickness like so, and then turn off my post subdivision. And now we're not getting that weird little funky bit. So now if I unsolo that, and then I go ahead and turn off my wireframe, the last thing we're gonna do is go back to our geometry panel, go to deformation and make sure that we inflate this just a touch, just so that it's just on the outside of our mesh set it to like one, and then I'll also go back to my geometry tab and under my dynamic subdivision here, I am going to set my offset to positive 100, and that will basically extrude the geometry outside. And now I do realize the inflate maybe is a little bit too much. So what I can do is I can go back to my deformation and maybe just bring that down to like negative one and then go to geometry and my thickness up just a little bit, maybe too much right there. Uh, yeah, that looks good. And now I have these cool looking wraps on my little handle here. And then if I wanted to add more detail to this, what I could do is I could go ahead and duplicate this. Doo -doo -doo, and I can go ahead and go to my subdivisions and add a ton of subdivisions to this after I, I do need to apply that. Before we do this actual subdivision, what I will do is go into my geometry and uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, apply my dynamic subdivision. Now we're at 26,000 points. Let's go ahead and subdivide this up a couple more times. So divide, divide, hold the control and unmask. Them. Why is it doing a weird thing? Solo, divide. Okay, cool. So now we're at 400,000 points. Sweet, awesome go and make sure we are on our highest subdivision level, go to, let's say the standard brush. So I will find, where is my standard brush? 
there it is and then choose a different alpha over here and uh, i always do like uh this alpha for like scales sort of thing and i could just go ahead and get a side view or front view and just start sculpting in some leather bits around it if i wanted to so quick little pro tip zbrush for ipad i'm going to be completely honest this was a test to see how this format worked on uh recording because i just record straight into the computer and i post it on the internet so i hope this uh quick little tip was useful if it was i hope you enjoyed it if you did let me know in the comment section down below questions comments concerns whatever else comment section down there for that as well and i'll leave you with the final tip one gram of protein per pound of body weight goodbye my friends bye